Hello YouTube. Our favorite CEO of GEO, the admirer of Osmanta's wine, Mr. Zhong Li, is back again with another rerun in the second half of version 5.2. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly about his upcoming rerun. So let's begin. Now, what's a Zhong Li rerun without a little bit of history lesson? Zhong Li was released back in version 1.1 as our first ever limited Geo character, and upon his release, he was hailed to be one of the best Geo supports in the game. A majority of the Genshin Impact community was really happy with how Zhong Li functioned. However, there was a portion of the community, especially the Chinese community, that was not so happy with Zhong Li's release kit. And we know how exactly Genshin reacts when the Chinese community is mad. So in the foreseeable future, Zhang Li actually underwent a couple of upgrades to his kit and a massive upgrade to the element of Geo in the form of Geo Resonance, buffing his potential from a must-have character to a character you should never skip out on in your dreams. But yeah, I, I did still not pull for him, so that's a different story. We all remember the entire drama that happened during Zhongli's release. Now, let's focus on how Zhongli actually worked. Zhongli's elemental skill, Dominus Lapidus, is the bread and butter of Zhongli's kit. Upon holding your skill, you create two things. A pillar on the ground and a shield around yourself. The shield possesses 150% damage absorption for all elements and physical damage. And when a character is within the shield, you also shred resistance by 20% on the opponent's both physical and elemental damage type. And now let's move on to the pillar. The pillar takes once every two seconds, deals a small chunk of damage, but mostly it's used for proccing tenacity passive, and that's pretty much it. Now moving on to Planet Befall, that's Zhongli's burst actually. Uh, it's a source of a very widely known meme, and it's also a petrification for 3.9 seconds. You freeze the enemies, they don't do anything. And that's pretty much it. A uh, key thing to remember is that this does not work on larger mobs such as bosses. So just keep that in mind. Bruh. Before we move on to the next section, I would like to have a little bit of your attention, please. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate if you leave a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot and means a lot to me. All right, thank you. Bye. All right. Let's talk about Zhongli's team. Zhongli is a character that works as a great support for pretty much any elemental DPSs and also physical DPSs in Genshin Impact. So far, if you were to ask me what character Zhongli can be paired up with, I would say pretty much everyone, except maybe a few exceptions such as Kinage and uh, I'll hate them because Kinage's best teams involve Dendro and Pyro, so you don't exactly need Zhongli. I'll hate them requires Electro and Dendro because he is a spread damage dealer. Yeah, apart from a few exceptions here and there in the element of Dendro, Zhongli works exceptionally well with Geo characters and also exceptionally well without the Geo characters such as a Yoimiya team that can massively benefit from having Zhongli by providing elemental rest shred and also a comfort of having a shield in your characters so Yoimiya doesn't have to dodge and lose DPS. Alright, now let's have a look at Zhongli's constellations. C1 allows you to create an extra pillar. C2 is you get an additional shield whenever you press your alt. Here is a demonstration of Zhongli C1. Okay, we have to wait for 4 seconds for the cooldown to get over. And here, you, as you can see, we have two pillars. This allows Zhongli to proc tenacity of the middle passive more efficiently. In my personal opinion, if anyone wants to go for Zhongli's early consolations, C1 would be a great stopping point. And Z2 if you really like to co-op a lot because C2 also works in co-op. So that's a great thing. Now let's answer the burning question in everyone's mind. How F2P friendly is Zhongli? Now, for a character who is a great support, Zhongli doesn't exactly require a lot of different investment into his weapons. His best and slow weapons for support build are actually Favonius Lance and a 3 star weapon called the Black Tassel. Provides HP, great for shielding purposes, gives you a tankier shield and more damage on your burst if that's what you're looking for. Favonius being Favj is the great option for teams that require you to have a little bit more energy particle generation. Great options, Zhongli works perfectly fine. For his artifact check, Zhongli actually requires you to run for a piece of tenacity of the millet, which I've been talking about quite a bit. His 2-piece buff provides you 20% HP, and the 4-piece buff provides you an attack bonus for your party members whenever the skill hits the enemies, and you can only trigger this every 
three seconds, which Zhongli shield actually takes every two seconds, so it actually works perfectly fine. Zhongli has 100% uptime on the tenacity buff. Now TLDR, Zhongli is a great support and quite easy to build that makes him a very F2P friendly character. Alright, despite having all these benefits in Zhongli's kit, does Zhongli actually have any bad qualities? Well, Zhongli as a character is as close to perfect as you can get. However, the only caveat that Zhongli has is not exactly in his kit, but the way Genshin developed enemies with the release of Rift Towns. Rift Towns are enemies that deal damage to you, basis of bleed damage. Which means that it goes through shield and Zhongli can't exactly protect you against damage that penetrates a shield. Therefore, when the Rift Towns were in Abyss, Zhongli's usage rate actually saw a little bit of a dip, but not that much. So Zhongli's position in the meta was still solidified, just like his burst. Now let's move on to the ugly part of Zhongli's kit. It's not exactly anything related to his kit in particular, it has to do with his original weapon, the Vortex Vanquisher. Now cruel thing about this weapon is that this weapon comes with an attack substat and a passive that only works on Zhongli. However, Zhongli is not meant to be an on-fielder. You generally hold skill on Zhongli and you switch out and the shield strength bonus, like the passive, does not work on other characters because every single character needs to have their own shield strength to, to particularly strengthen the shield. Therefore, Vortex Vanquisher not only is a very bad option, but also falls behind a 3-star option such as the Black Tassel. And another thing about Zhongli's kit is his Constellation 6, that is kind of counterintuitive in a particular team comp such as Hu Tao. Zhongli's C6 allows him to heal, which Hu Tao doesn't exactly want to have. And Hu Tao generally uses Zhongli as a very good support in her teams. Therefore, apart from these two things, particularly Zhongli doesn't really have any faults in his kit. However, if you are pulling for a Caesar Zhongli, I wouldn't exactly recommend pulling for Vortex Vanquisher as his weapon. You're perfectly fine with a Black Tassel, or if you really want to run something extra support worthy, Favonius Lance is always a great option. Now let's have a look at the Spiral Abyss usage rate for version 2.2. I'm not going to be looking at version 1.1 because I think back then everyone who had Zhongli used Zhongli. But over here, as we can see, the usage rate is 69.57%, which is relatively lower as compared to his previous iterations. Now let's switch to version 5.1. One Zhongli usage rate, where we can see Zhongli's usage rate still is about 70.8%. Now, it's slightly above than the previous 69%. However, a key thing to remember is the sheer amount of newer characters we have had since version 2.2 till 5.2. That's three whole major regional updates, okay? And so, Zhongli still maintaining the 70% usage rate in current meta is a great thing. That means Zhongli is one of those characters that is not exactly affected by the release of any newer characters. While he maintains a steady usage rate in Abyss, the only place where having more characters really matters. And with the release of IT as a new endgame content, Zhongli can also be used as your Geo character in certain rotations. So yeah, overall speaking, Zhongli really has a very high pull value. Now finally, the real question. Should you be pulling for Zhongli or not? In a simple word, yes. He's a great character, a great support, a must-have in a lot of different Geo team comps, and especially if you main characters such as Ito, Navia, any Pyro DPS, any Electro DPS, yeah. But can you also play the game without having Zhongli? Yes, there are other great supports such as Layla and Diona and Kirara, can come close to Zhongli's potential as a shielder. Oh yeah, I also forgot Toma. He's also pretty good. But yeah, the point still stands that Zhongli is a very, very comfortable character, quite easy to build, and also he is very attractive, as you can see, right? <laughs> but yeah, so if you are pulling for Zhongli, I wish you the very best of luck. If you're not, then do let me know the reason down in the comments. As a final note, I stream Smoke Night on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Dragner, so do check me out with the link in the description. I would love to have you there, okay? And as always, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.